Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and you want to play with some book pages? Let's do it! Okay, so uh, today I wanted to show you um, some ideas with book pages that you can use inside your journals. Maybe you like to draw or doodle or um, uh, you know you've got the inner artist in you uh, bubbling to come out. Um, here's just a little uh, butterfly that I drew. I, actually I drew it out in pencil and then I uh, painted it in and then I went around with Stabilo pencil on the outside and just blurred the edges and I just wanted to show you a technique that I do with this. I'm not going to actually do a watercolor today. I'm going to show you something that if you're not a watercolor artist or you just want to have fun and uh, you can't draw a straight line or a stick man to save your life, here's an easy way to get um, pictures onto your pages which is a lot of fun. Okay so just put this little guy over here for now and let me just show you some examples. So basically what I did was I used stamps and I used rubber stamps and I just stamped an image in black and then I painted it in and I wanted to show you a few different examples. This one is a straight straight on paint, watercolor paint, and this is the opacity that you get with the watercolor paint if you don't do the little technique. And I'm just going to show you the very easy uh, watercolor trick uh, to, so that you can read more of the words through if you like that look. And I'll show you some examples. Oh, I will show you some examples. I have some. <laughs> Not organized. Okay, here's an example of one where you can see through a little bit better. And here's also, I did the same stamp several times in several different ways. This one, this one, exact same stamp, exact same watercolor, but just applied differently. What, where'd the first one go? Lost it already. My goodness. Where do, where do things go? Here they are. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, I, I started off this project. I wanted to show you, um, and I was absolutely sure I had black archival ink and it turned out my black archival ink was all dried up and uh, it wasn't useful. So I ended up using black soot distress ink and this does react with water. Uh, whereas the archival ink is waterproof. Once you put it down, you can paint over it and you won't have any problem at all. But I just want you to know if you don't happen to have archival ink, you can still do this technique with reg regular old, uh, black soot distress ink or any black ink uh, that's a, a dye ink and uh, you can still get decent results. So these were all done with good old distress ink black soot. And uh, okay so and I'll just show you a couple other designs that I did with other stamps. Doo -doo -doo. Oh here's a little bird. I thought that was very cute. That's just from a rubber stamp and just uh, coloring it in a little bit with watercolor. Um, it's just like a coloring book color. It doesn't really take a lot of uh, fancy technique or anything, but I'll show you a couple tricks to make it look cool. And the birdies are up and at them. Yes, we are all up and at them today. Okay, so, and I also thought I'd show you the difference. Uh, we'll do one on uh, cream colored paper, like this, uh, this nice vanilla. That's like more like a, yeah, like a French vanilla deep color. It's kind of cool. Oh, that's a neat page. Let me do this one. Or one with a lot of text looks great on it too, but oh, let me, let me do this one. Okay. Decisions, decisions. And let me pick one out with uh, just a white paper with regular font, regular uh, text on it, just for fun. So you can see the, how the uh, image pops out. That's a little bit different. All right. So in the world of easy camp, <laughs> this is how we do things. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, maybe you don't have big fancy stamps either. I'm going to show you how you can do that. You can get very cool effects with just little stamps. Okay, so I've got some watercolors. You can use inexpensive watercolors from, um, you know, the Dollar Tree. It, you don't need expensive watercolors for this at all. So get some inexpensive ones. Get your favorite little paintbrush. A little tip on the end helps because it works more like a little pen. But if you don't have that, just use, just use what you have. Any little paintbrush will do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our stamped images. So I think I'm going to put this butterfly stamp here and maybe I'll do... What will I do? Uh, I'll do this one here. Okay, or maybe I'll do this one. Well, we'll give them both a try. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, oh, I got fuzz from a previous project. Turn this over. I'm going to ink, ink it up. Inky dinky dink. Dab, dab, dab. Rub, rub, rub. Probably not supposed to rub, but I do. Okay, here we go. And down. Now, I don't know how much of this page I'm actually going to use in my finished project, so I'm just going to put it in the center so that I can change the borders after if I want to do that. Hopefully I'll get a good image here. 
Yeah, that's pretty decent. I can work with that. As long as I can see where to paint my butterfly. And, uh, okay, so now let's do... Well, this one's kind of pretty. Let's do this. I think it'll come out strong. I don't know. Maybe we'll do this one. Oh, I don't know. Let's do this one. All right, here we go. This is a big one. You may or may not have big stamps, so... Um, and you don't have to have big stamps. We're going to do a small stamp one next so you can see how it can be very impactful as well. All right, here we go. And we're down. Sometimes you just got to make the decision and go for it in life. Feeling very bold today. Yes. Putting on the... Oh, barely saw that. Okay, well, I'll turn that over. Some stamps are better than others. <laughs> and that's just the way it goes sometimes. Let's try this. Let me actually... Uh, Rewet. I'm just going to spritz a little bit of water on my, just a little bit. Maybe it'll make it more compliant. So we have something to play with here. That was very non-compliant. Let's get a different page. All right. Better page. Here we go. All right. Back to the drawing board. And we're inking. And we're hopefully inking better this time. You want to stamp on a nice, really super flat surface. That could be part of my problem here. All right. All right. Let's hope for a better image. Oh, much better. Now, it probably would have been better if I, I did the butterfly and it came out like that. But we're just going to leave it as is and see how it goes. Um, all right. Now, that looks kind of cool just the way it is. And you could totally leave it like that. But we're just going to take it to the next level. And I've got some water here. And I've got a little um, something to wipe my brush off of. Okay. So I can change colors and things like that. Uh, but let's have Pam put on her eyeglasses so she can actually see what she's doing here. Okay. Oh, now I can see. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's go with, how about a little bit of pink? And uh, I, have, I have nothing to, to dab this on. Okay, I'm just going to use this. Okay. There's anything plastic is good. Um, that'll dilute it a little bit more so you get more, you, if you don't want a red, just dilute it down and then you're going to have like a little bit more of a pinky color. So I am just going to maybe do some of these little areas that are white. Okay, color them in. Now some of the black is going to uh, run, that's what I'm trying to tell you, is that you will get a little bit of runnage, but um, if you just place the watercolor down. Um, in certain areas, oh, I need to grab something. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. And uh, what you want to do is, well, let's fill in a little bit more. And I, I use a pretty, um, a good amount of water. And it's like a, a dilute ink color. Um, maybe I want to do different colors elsewhere. We'll put a little red dot there, red dot there. And then maybe we'll change to a different color. Uh, maybe let's do some purple. Okay. A little bit of purple. All right, here we go. And we'll do some of these areas in purple. I'm just putting like water droplets down. They don't necessarily fit, but I'm not smudging too much. That's the whole key. I'm not smudging with my brush, like going like this, um, because that's going to, uh, move the paint around a lot. Okay. So now what it, the, basically this is the technique. It's daubing. You, uh, use a tissue. And you just go back and you reabsorb the uh, paint that you just put down. And you might say, well, that seems kind of uh, futile because uh, we barely have anything there. Well, you do have a little bit. And let me show you. So you do have some translucent color there. Now, the thing is, you can go back and you can put more. So maybe you want to you want more of a purple. OK, so that's going to happen when you go down number two. Um, application time. OK, just put a little along here, with little dropper daubs. And uh, you can kind of hit the white spots. And that will uh, now concentrate a little bit more color there. And maybe I'll just go along here and I'll put some there. I don't know if I did that before, but I'm doing it now, going wild. And uh, maybe I'm going to put some here too as I'm carrying on with my design. And you can kind of, you know, put it where you want it, sort of following the lines, sort of not. You can make it how you see fit and you can use your kids watercolor set doesn't matter all right there we got that oh, 
Let's stick that somewhere here. Okay, now let's go ahead and just, we're gonna daub again. Let's try and get a clean spot. Okay, there we go. See, this is a little more concentrated this time. Now the color is starting to show up a little bit better. Okay, so now we're at this phase, adding some color, very easy to do. Maybe I wanna do more of the, the pink. I mean, I'm feeling a little more passionate in the pink department there. So let me get some pink going here. It'll be a little bit more of a rose color now, as opposed to a little dusty pink. Almost a bit of a, a burgundy or so. Yeah, maybe I'll put some of this down here. That's not going to interfere too much with everything else I did. That's okay. Maybe I'll put some here. And it's okay if it co-blends with the others. It happens sometimes. Don't worry about that. Just let it be. Put some up here. Okay. Take it out here a little bit. Little daubs. And yes, my paper is getting wet and it will wrinkle a little bit, but it will dry after you're done too. So, all right, so we're going to do the same thing. Daub, 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 daub. Okay, show. Okay, so you can see it's starting to pick up more color and more color. And um, you can just keep going to town with this. Let's say I, I, want, I want to do something very reckless abandon like, and I'm going to jump to yellow. So you're gonna wash off your brush really well. Usually a dirty water than a clean water bin is good. And uh, when you wipe your brush off here, you can see if any color comes off. If it doesn't, you're good to go. So let me uh, grab some yellow, yellow. And we'll put some yellow here. All right, maybe I want to, maybe I want to accent this guy. Okay, he just needs, he's going to have a very beautiful uh, yellow border and let's see maybe he's going to have yellow all the way around here and I've got a lot of water on my brush so that's why I'm doing it and um, I guess I am dragging here aren't I now I am taking some of the black ink with me because it's just regular pigment ink but if it gets too dark uh, just what rinse it off and then come back again with some more brighter yellow and as you can see the uh, can you see that let me bring you closer what are you doing way over there come close okay there I am uh, putting down some more yellow where some of the black is starting to mix with the yellow. So let's just try that. That looks actually kind of cool. All right. Now you could totally let that dry like that too. Let's say if you like that look where the yellow really pops, um, totally can do that. All right. Well, now this is the only Kleenex I have, so I'm going for it. Okay. Da -da -da. Now this is going to give more of a subtle, a subtle yellow border. Okay, and I can always come in and do it again. And I think I'm just going to do something down the middle. And usually, let's see, well, there's no usually. These butterflies of imagination can be anything you want down the middle. Um, but we'll make this guy, how about we'll, we'll make him purple. We'll make your little head and your body purple. Okay, okay, that's all right. Yep, you're going to be purple. It also helps you learn how to draw a butterfly just by looking at the stamp shape. Which is kind of get the idea. He's got a little chubber middle body, but then he is um, thinner on the end part on his uh, on his rumpus. <laughs> if he had a rumpus, that's what it would look like. And now you could maybe want to leave this darker in the center for the look. And I think I might do that because that's looking actually kind of neat. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave that as is. Maybe I'm just gonna put a little bit more. Well, that was a lot more. That's okay. Well, we're just gonna put some here. This is more red, red, ready pink color. And uh, a little bit more there, a little bit more there. And I'm just gonna daub that back up. Oh, got a little bit of my purple there, that's okay. Can always put more down. I'll just drag a little purple there. Oh, we got a little bit of a fuchsia tail. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave him as is, let him dry. Maybe not, but I'm just gonna follow his antenna out and give him some color, I'm stealing from the body and I'm taking his antenna out there. And I may end up outlining him as well, just to give him a little bit more pop. Maybe I need to take away some of that in the middle. I don't know, it looks so cool. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it, but now I gotta move it. Okay, so everybody don't breathe. I'm gonna put it over there because if I tilt it, it'll run. Okay, I did it, I think it's okay. All right, so now let's take this one. This one's on the cream. And this one, now this one I won't paint as much, 
um, just because he has uh, he has just like some little flowers here, which I could just do the little flowers. And that's it. So this could be very easy uh, painting. And you don't have to be a super artist or anything. You're just basically coloring in the lines with some nice um, wet watercolor that you dab away after with a Kleenex. That's pretty much the entirety of the rocket science here. So it's not too bad. Anybody can do this. And um, supplies should be relatively inexpensive uh, if you already have the rubber stamps. If you don't have the rubber stamps yet, well, you know, what I would recommend is the next te technique I show you is to get a very small, inexpensive rubber stamp and uh, or a regular silicone stamp will work, doesn't matter, um, and try it that way. Okay, do to do. Okay, very pale. Go back in, put a little bit more color. Okay, a little stronger, more intensity this time. The paper underneath is soaking it up. Soaking up the water and the paint at the same time. Okay, I'm going to let this layer sit there a little longer so we have, uh, or I may even leave these opaque. I don't think so. I think I'm going to blot them away just so you can see a little bit more of the under, underside. There we go. All right, rinsing. Are we doing that time? 16. Oh, okay. And we're going to do the base. I still have some purple and yellow here, so I'm going to mix that together, and I think I'm going to get something like a brown if I do that. Let's see what I got. Oh, I got like a purpley. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's do that. And now it's mixing a little with the black too, which I think looks kind of neat. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. That looks pretty cool. And then let's get some green for the leaves. Okay, here's some green. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, there we go. Just doing these leaves, filling them in. This is really fun for, you know, folks who have been timid about ever trying to watercolor paint or something. It's a nice, easy, gentle way to get started, and it can be a lot of fun. You can totally leave it like that and let it air dry. Let me show you that. That looks kind of cool, huh? Actually, that one actually looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll leave that one and just let that air dry like that. Okay, so you can just do that. That's another, that's going to be another technique. Okay, so I'm going to just put him over here to dry and then I want to show you the last one got to get a clean page here we go is let's say you only have a simple stamp and you're saying well you know I only have I only have a flower or you know I only have one thing and I don't have all that fancy stuff Pam work with me here okay all right so what we got is our black soot distress ink and our small stamp and we can put one here Let's put it, but we can do multiples of these. So we can actually decorate the page, perhaps. Yeah, that, that sounds kind of fun. We'll put a bunch of these on here and you can put as many as you want. You can go to town. Uh, you can hang some off the edge. That always looks kind of cool. All right. And I'll show you some things we can do with this technique. Okay. Well, that one's a bluebird, but we'll fix it. Okay. I got the paintbrush and I've still got some paint here um let's see maybe I'll go into the green a little bit since I've still sort of got it working here and I'm just going to quickly fill in some of these okay these go pretty quick oh can you see me yeah 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 okay all right and maybe this one these are pretty fast. Okay. I think I showed you another uh, technique using the stamps on the book page, but we used watercolor, or not watercolor, we used uh, pencils. We used colored pencils, and that's another easy way to do it. If you don't have uh, watercolor, um, use your colored pencils, and um, that's a fun, quick way to do it. And I'll, I'll try and link that one below so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. Okay, so let's just say that, and then we're going to switch colors. Dirty water, clean water, dirty water, clean water, dab that. Okay, now let's, let's dab this and see what happens. Okay, so we get more of a muted effect, which that's how we're, uh, we're starting, and that's okay. Okay, let me try the, the pink now. This going to be like a multi-colored one here. Can you see me? No. Don't be quiet. Don't be shy. You can tell me. 
Yep. Just say, hey, hey, I heard Jesse. I heard somebody saying, oh, excuse me, you're off screen yet again. Can you please fix that? So um, the black will run a little bit, um, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And when you daub it up, it uh, gives you an opportunity to take away some of the darkness that comes when uh, the black ink liquefies. Oops. So if you make a bluebird, you just go back in there and you start daubing and that takes away a lot of the, the evils. Okay, so let's see. Let me daub these up. Okay, and they're just nice light pink now. And um, I'm going to do a few more of those, I think. Doot, 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 doot. Okay, I'll do a couple of these. Can you... You're up close. Yep. Maybe you can see my black ink dissolving right before your eyes. It actually even comes off on the thing. But as you, you uh, mop it up, uh, the dissolve runaway s sort of stops and you get a bit of a blurred image, but I think it's kind of cool. And uh, let's maybe try, well, we were working with yellow, right? Dirty water, clean water, dirty water, clean water. Dab, dab, dab. Okay. A little bit more clean water and let's go back for the yellow. Just using some basic colors here. And you don't have to color every one of them in. Maybe you just want to color some or you can color them all. Totally up to you. All right. Okay. I'll try and fix this guy over here. What on earth? What's going on over here? Oh, working with black now. Okay. This is just a very petaled flower we shall call it okay and a little bit more okay now oh, we'll just do them all with the heck okay it's good to rinse it off every once in a while because it does pick up a lot of the black you get a bit of a muddy color see that okay oh, took the whole thing so you gotta let it sit in sit for a little bit like a couple of seconds just so that the color can grab the porous paper and uh, well, let's, let's mix the yellow and the red and we'll get some orange. I guess it got more red than yellow. So we got more, more red, more pink. <laughs> so much for my color theory. Out the window. Out the window. You know, sometimes art makes itself and we are merely the tool movers. And it has a mind of its own sometimes. So you can either fight it or go with it. And I think going with it is a lot more fun. All right, here we go. Let's mop up all this stuff here. And now we have these nice little translucent pa uh, pictures on our paper. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. Uh, very whimsical, very pretty. Okay, let me back you out a bit so we can see all of them. Let's see how everybody is drying now. Okay, so this one still drying but as you can see the color is more opaque and you can see some words but not all the words see right there that one you can't really see through so let's say you want to see through some of them uh you could just go you could even just like dab one and and just okay we'll just dab that one to see how that will look this guy's kind of going renegade on me here okay there we go see now you can see what that would look like if you dabbed it all off just dab it all off so you can see it the heck it's only paper right? Yeah, we got more paper, we got more paint. Okay, so, and that's the difference when you dab it off. Now this um, red was sitting there a little longer, so more of the uh, pigment from the ink and penetrated the paper, so you're going to get a little more intense color. And the bottom I haven't dabbed. I think I like that density of color that uh, down there, so I'm going to leave that. Okay, so there's that one. And let me move all my stuff. And this guy, we have this guy here with his little purple center. Now, if you take a heat gun or a blow dryer to it, that's going to go whizz, off into many different directions and you may not want to do that. So I would suggest not doing that. Okay. Now what you can do, let's say your print came out a little bit bare and it's not as uh, intense as you want. You can go with a, um, right here, just a, any kind of, okay, what do I got? This is a, Faber Castell S Pit Artist Pen Black. And uh, I have links to everything below if you guys are looking for anything. Um, although I'll see if I can find some inexpensive watercolor to put down there. Um, okay. But you just run around the outside and it can be a loose following. Can you see? I need to bring in closer, I think. 
come closer. All right, there we go. And just follow along, do do do. Okay. All right, see that? No. How that gives it more of a border sharpness. Now, if you want to take it up one level, you can do that too with border sharpness. Um, you can grab the old Stabilo pencil and let me find one of those. Here's one. This is a Aquarelle Stabilo pencil and uh, it's an 8046, I believe, but basically it's a water, it's like a water soluble graphite pencil, but this is what it does. So you basically, okay, I'm trying not to smudge my, my inner, my inner butterfly. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go around and follow the edges roughly. And just following the line roughly. I don't have to be perfect. Go around. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, now you can use a paintbrush or you can use a Q-tip to do this. Maybe I'll use a Q-tip. Maybe everybody's got a Q-tip. Okay, here's a Q-tip. Okay, and now I'm just going to dip it in water, and that's going to become my my paintbrush. And I'm going to just run around the outside of this. And see how that black dissolves? And then you start enhancing the outside of your butterfly this way, really making it pop off the page. And the color will go where the water is. So if you draw on the outside of the black line then your water, your color will be pulled out. See that? Okay. It's a really cool little pencil. If you don't have one, consider getting one. So if you put it on your Christmas list or something, because it's a lot of fun to play with. You can probably do some stuff, but in, it won't smudge after. It's, it'll dry and be in place just like a watercolor. Um, yeah, so... Now be careful wherever else there is water, if I combine those two borders of water, they will blend together. So I don't want to touch those two. But see out there, you can see the difference on how much the butterfly stands out. So maybe I'll just go ahead and finish this one in that. And uh, so that's very easy to do. Whoops, if I could follow the line, it would be even more amazing. Okay, going quickly here, going quickly. Okay. Going quickly and woo, in there. Okay, so now let me show you this and then we'll try and take it up one more little notcheroo. And in the meantime, um, if you uh, enjoy these videos, go ahead and click the notification bell in the lower right of the video picture. If you want to be notified whenever I open, uh, whenever I upload a new video, um, but I do upload them Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to actually take it into the design so you can see what that, that is like. And you can also blot this as well. Let's say you think to yourself, oh, that's, that's too dark. Um, you can blot this as well. But uh, let's say you want it to smudge farther out into the periphery. You just bend the angle of your Q-tip and that makes it a wider border. Okay. Um, and... Uh, I do podcasts Tuesday and Thursday. If you like to talk about more junk journal related stuff, come on out and uh, listen to that. That's very fun. I'm just going to haze that in to give it a little bit. Let's just spread this out a little bit more so it pops on the page. Yeah, like a good pop. And um, what else I got to tell you? Um, Oh, get your free checklist of uh, junk journal supplies, things that you can find around your house for free or almost for free if you're really scavenged and also some uh, fancier stuff if you're interested. But I've compiled a big list. Um, and if you check in the drop down list below each video in the description, you're going to find a link to that. You also get the note uh, from the bookmaker explaining what um, a junk journal is. It's a great little note you can tuck inside uh, your junk journals if you're giving them as gifts to help explain what they are. And 
Um, podcasts, I told you about that. Playlists are listed down below and at the end. So if you like a category, let's say you're following the Using Up the Book Page series and you want to see them all, that you just click on the playlist and you'll have every single one of them. And they're all numbered and you can start wherever you like or, or uh, jump back and forth. Join our Facebook group. We're having lots of fun there. It's a very fun, supportive and positive environment. Everybody's really willing to jump in and answer questions. And, and I've learned so much from it myself. I can't, I can't even tell you guys. It's been amazing. So um, let me go in here and where are we talking about yes we're good okay I am going to draw on the inside so let's see what on earth this looks like this is you can add water or not add water it's totally your choice okay and I am just following some of the lines in here so you can get an idea of what this might do I can show you quickly Draw faster, Pam. Draw faster. Okay, I'm drawing faster. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back in with my little Q-tip. And basically, I'm just going to just lightly go along here with some water. Now, it's going to make it more dark and more mysterious and more, uh, you know, giving it that grunge appeal. But if you like that, then this could be your ticket to lots of adventure and fun into that world. And if you've never explored the, you know, steampunky, grungy kind of uh, dark uh, darkish sort of my mystical mysterious sort of look you can always this is maybe your opportunity to play with that so uh, give things a go remember try things you've never tried before and um, uh, just give your supplies that you have on hand another look-see and see how you would like to uh, um, adventure with them because uh, sometimes you don't need a lot of supplies it's just a matter of uh, trying new techniques with them and it uh, can really open up a lot of possibilities. So there you go. We have really taken this little butterfly to new different levels. And that was just a rubber stamp picture. So let me show you what we did again. We did that. We did that. And we did that. And then here's just these others that I did the other day. Let me back out so you can see. Goodness gracious. Uh, what I did the other day too. One, two. And where's my big painted butterfly? There he is. If you feel like painting yourself. There you go, guys. I hope you had fun. This was a lot of fun for me. And um, I always love playing with playing with you guys. It's so much fun. So you never know what we're going to come up with next. I've got a lot of ideas um, in the cooker coming at you fast. So hang tight. Stay tuned. Happy crafting. And I'll be talking to you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.